You are watching a Modern Air Combat Environment tutorial video made on behalf of Battlespace Simulations by Close Air Solutions. Here is the summary of what we covered in this tutorial video. All saving, running and clearing of missions is done by using the File tab in the top navigation ribbon. To open a mission, click the Open folder and select from the available missions. To save, click the Save button or the drop down next to it to save as a new mission. Missions are saved by default to the My Documents MACE Missions folder. If you have been editing, you really should save your mission before you run it, and this is why. If you save a mission that has never been run, it is known as a clean mission. You can play and then stop a mission and then save, but then all start positions and times will have changed. MACE will save this file with a timestamp. The timestamp shows in hours and minutes how far you are into the mission. MACE does this to ensure that you don't oversave your clean mission. In our experience, it is better to save then run a mission to test it out, then stop and reload the mission and then continue editing. It is sometimes useful to clear a mission out completely. To do this, click New and accept the warning and you will start with a blank canvas. To run a mission, you select Play from the Quick Toolbar or from the Mission Controls tab in the Navigation ribbon. You'll see things moving and the mission clock running at the bottom Information Status bar. First, we need to understand the three different types of simulation entity. The first is a platform. A platform is an entity that can move, emit, shoot and be destroyed. An example of a platform would be a person or an aircraft that you wish to be able to have full control over in the scenario. A site cannot move on its own, but it can emit, shoot and be destroyed. These are used when you know that you will never have a need for the entity to move by itself, but you still want it to interact with other entities in the simulation. For example, a fixed air defence radar installation or a surface-to-air missile site. You can manually move the entities using the techniques discussed later in this video. Cultural entities in MACE cannot move by themselves. They do not emit or shoot, but they can be destroyed. Cultural entities placed or imported into MACE are most often used for destructible target sets. An example of a cultural entity would be a building or a group of trees, or a static vehicle, or a ship that you have no intention of moving and that you do not require to react to other entities other than the ability to be destroyed. All the platform sites and cultural items are found in the Mission Builder tab on the Navigation ribbon. They are grouped into drop-downs for each type. The drop-downs are subdivided into categories for easy navigation that can be expanded and collapsed by clicking on the triangle symbol to the left of the category name. To add a platform, select the one you want 
and then left click the red plus button above the drop down. Please note, because it is red, this button is not momentary. It is a toggle button that always stays active until you deactivate it. To place the platform, put the mouse pointer over the mission area and note that it has changed from a pointer to a cross. Because the plus button is a toggle type, you can add multiple entities by left clicking just where you want them to go. When you are finished adding, you can click to deactivate the adding button. Another way of deactivating the toggle button is to right click on a clear space in the mission area. It's worth mentioning again that this is standard behaviour in MACE, that you can right click to cancel an action tool and return your mouse pointer to the selection tool, which is the default. The same method applies to sites and cultural. Simply select from the drop down, click the red plus button and click on the mission area to add and then deactivate when you're finished. Now if I play the mission and do the same, you can see that you can do exactly the same procedure at runtime, so you can add entities if you need to when the mission is running. If you have added an entity and wish to change it to a different entity within the drop downs, you do not have to delete it and add another. Instead, you can use the change button, a white triangle in a black surround directly above the drop down to change it. To do this, select the entity you want to change by left clicking on it in the mission area. You know that it is selected because a green ellipse if that is your default colour, will appear directly below the entity icon. Use the drop down list in the Mission Builder tab to select the new entity that you wish to change to. When you have selected a new entity, press the triangle above the list. You will be prompted asking if you want to keep the original waypoints, speeds, and actions of the old platform or if you want to reset to the default values. When you press yes or no, the entity will be instantly changed to the new selection. If you press cancel, then this cancels the action. When you add a platform, you'll get one or more waypoints. The number of waypoints that are created when a platform is placed is defined outside of MACE and can be changed, but this is an advanced tutorial for later. Typically, human platforms are added with just one waypoint, whereas aircraft have about 10. You can add more waypoints by using the plus waypoint toggle button on the right of the platform dropdown in the Mission Builder tab. This works the same way as the Add Platform button. It is a toggle button and you can add multiple waypoints until you choose to untoggle the button or right click on a clear space in the mission area. To move a platform, site or cultural object, press and hold the left control button and then left click and hold on the object you want to move. You can now release the left control button and move the entity where you want it. Let go of the mouse button to place it. Note that when you have the control button pressed and you hover over an entity, you get some information about the entity. The same is true for waypoints. Select the platform with the waypoints you want to move. Remember, you will see the green ellipse underneath the platform. Then, press the left control button and then left click on the waypoint and move it. Release the mouse button when it is in the correct area and then you have placed it.
It is now important to discuss the concept of intent. When a platform is in intent, it will follow its route, which is usually defined by its waypoint path. We know if it's in intent when, if we select the platform, we see a black line extending from the platform, known as the heading bar. If I start the mission, you can see the platform is following its route. I can ask the aircraft to do something that is not following a route. This is called a delta state, and it takes the aircraft out of intent. For example, if I left click on the black line and drag it in a direction and then left click again, the aircraft will now go in that direction forever. It is out of intent. We can see this because the line in front of the aircraft is now white. And you will also see a little delta symbol in the bottom left hand corner of the platform icon. Usefully, this symbol is visible whether the platform is selected or not. I can return the aircraft to intent by selecting the entity control tab in the top navigation ribbon and hitting the return to intent button for the aircraft that is selected. I can also return the platform to intent by right clicking on the heading bar. You can now see that the heading bar line extending from the platform has changed back to black and the platform is starting to follow its route again. I'll demonstrate this again, but this time I'll select an aircraft and then type in a heading in the entity control window. The line turns white and the entity heads in that direction. If I press the return to intent button, it reverts back to black again and the aircraft starts to follow the waypoint route. MACE also allows mapping of the return to intent button to a joystick so that you can quickly return control to MACE after taking manual control of a platform. More of this later. If a platform has a waypoint and it is selected as the next waypoint, then that is where it will be looking when the mission starts. You can see that when I add a human and use the left control to move the waypoint, the platform rotates to look at it. It won't move towards it because all ground platforms start off with a default speed of zero. Assigning speeds is covered later. All entities, including waypoints, have properties that can be changed with ease in Mace's pop-out windows. To see Entity or Waypoint Properties windows, just right mouse click on the entity. There is a lot of information and parameters you can adjust here, and much of this will be covered in a later tutorial. For now, just note that they all have a delete button at the bottom of the pop-out window that can be used to delete the entity. In the case of waypoints, all the waypoints for the selective platform can be deleted if required. It is sometimes useful to be able to select multiple platforms in order to delete them or to affect their group properties. To select multiple platforms, press and hold the left shift button on the keyboard and click the left mouse button and drag the white square over the entities you wish to select. You can then release the left shift button and the left mouse button. There are a few things you can do now. You can move the entire group by pressing left control and clicking on the map area, but not where any of the group entities are. If you hold the left mouse button down and move the mouse, the group will follow. You can also affect the properties of the entire group. By right-clicking on one of the entities in the group, the properties pop-out window appears. You can see that you've selected a group because at the top of the window, you'll see multiple sub-tabs with the members of the group in it. 
You could affect their individual properties by clicking on each sub-tab and changing properties as required. Now, if you change a property in this window, for example, the root speed, and then click at the bottom of the pop-out window, apply to group, then the root speed will change for all of the entities in that group. For now, we'll see how to quickly delete all the selected entities. To delete the platforms quickly, you press the left control button and the delete key. You'll be prompted to ask if you're sure you want to delete all the selected platforms. If you click yes, the group selections will be deleted. Note that the group selection does not work for waypoints. These must be deleted by first selecting the platform with the left mouse click and then right clicking on the waypoint. Remember, you have the delete all waypoints option at the bottom of the platforms window. Finally, with group selections, sometimes it is useful to number a group such that you can come back to it at any time without having to redo the selection. To do this, select the group again using the left shift button and left mouse clicking and dragging the square over the group. You can add people to the group that you've missed in that initial selection by holding the left shift key and clicking on another entity to add it. Once you're happy with the number in your group, if you press control and then one of the number keys from one to zero, that will assign that group that number. If we deselect the group, we can reselect it quickly by pressing the Alt button on the keyboard and then the number you assigned. Here is the summary of what we covered in this tutorial video.